all right <coughs> okay <coughs> so basically uh, these are the questions that are usually asked by us you know by different clients and the students so mm -hmm. we'll cover these first right so yeah. what will cover in uh, what will be covered in this course so you know basically uh, with the soap ui tutorial sessions we used to cover the soap and the rest both but these days like soap is uh, absolute right it's not much in use so we will cover the basics of soap protocol as well as rest but our main focus will be on the rest testing right yes as manual as well as the automation part we'll yeah. see we'll see things how manually work then we'll gradually move to the automation <laughs> like we we want to learn the automation of the testing part so how we are going to cover that using the ruby language right hmm. so um, within the sessions also we are going to uh, uh, will go in depth with the groovy right if we want to yeah. learn the automation of these web services we need the groovy scripting within the soap ui yes we can work with the javascript also but uh, uh, within soap ui tool groovy has much better support uh, than the javascript hmm. right and after that after covering uh, the manual part and and the groovy part we will move to the framework within yeah. within this session we are going to cover the data driven framework right this is the most yeah. used one okay so the next one is is it, is it necessary to learn groovy so yes so you know if we want to learn automation within the soap ui we have to learn groovy right yeah. <clears throat> and if we are good with java if we at least we have a basic knowledge about java then we are good to go with the groovy right even if we don't have that we can cover the, uh, we we are going to cover this within the sessions right hmm. okay so you have any programming uh, background within java or any other language hmm web scripting okay 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 so uh, will we work on a project so yes uh, like we want to learn the web, uh, web concept of web services how this rest testing works right so mm. we made our custom app uh, we call it a retail app it's it's a full fledged retail app it has all the features like the retail login uh, different feature for the user different feature for the admin right so that particular app first we are going to deploy that app within the sessions only then we are going to you know do our all practice part learning part groovy practice and all on this retail app only hmm right so yeah. uh, not today but tomorrow i'm going to show you that uh, how this retail app uh, you know works like hmm. all right so next will we cover soap so again uh, like i told you so soap is not much in uh, use these days so i'm going to tell you about the basic of soap right how it used to work what uh, comparison with the rest and all so i'm going to tell tell you about it but our main focus within the session will be on the rest right yeah okay so uh, will we cover free as well as paid version so yeah uh, we are going to cover both hmm. first we are going to uh, you know finish up with the free version uh, yeah. reason, reason being if within the free version we have to use the eclipse right to un uh, hmm. use the j unit means we have to do some extra work within the free version with the paid version it's really easy to do that so first if we cover the you know the difficult part uh, it's really easy to uh, understand uh, the pro version right yes okay so will we get the link of recorded session so yeah everything that we are discussing here every session is recorded so you are going to oh. get a link and you can rewatch the session if you want yeah okay so can you rejoin the class yes you can rejoin the class if something happens and you won't able to uh, not cope up uh, with the regular session so yes you can rejoin it so will you help us in preparing resume yeah if, if you need uh, that kind of help we can do that do we need to learn groovy ourselves yeah this is important so you know you on your end you don't have to uh, learn anything about groovy right what we need during the session uh, to learn the automation i'm going to tell you within the sessions only right mm. so everything uh, we are going to cover side by side within the sessions only we are going to practice with the soap ui tool and side by side i'm going to tell you about the basics of groovy right and the implementation of that within the soap ui 
So, what is the scope of soap UI test? Okay. So, about the scope of the so uh, soap UI testing. So, you know, so soap UI tool is uh, f uh, here for quite some time, right? And mm. gradually we see that uh, it's still evolving, right? Earlier we used to uh, work on the SOAP protocol within SOAP and now we are working on the rest. So it has scope, it has lots of scope, right? So about the Groovy, again, you know, like I told you that Groovy is, you know, generated from Java. So if you know about Java, the basic concept like the oops, oops concept or basic syntax of the uh, how programming languages work so we'll good to go with the groovy it's it's not a, uh, it's really easy to understand groovy it's n not a big deal if you have any experience with the, any language of, of programming right it's just concept mm. and a different syntax mm. okay so clients in the session so usually uh, the clients we get, that we get in these sessions are the manual testers or someone who's new to testing and there are people who come for the projects there, that they have a project that they want to automate okay <clears throat> will i help you in your project so yeah yes i can guide you if you have if you have a project from your company and you need my assistance in that i can do that right so <clears throat> accept these questions if you have any query uh, before starting the session you can ask me I, even I have to learn Java with along with Groovy. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so no problem with that. So you are asking that uh, uh, I am going to teach you Java in the session, or I'm I'm sorry, I didn't got your question. It means to know the Groovy, we have to learn Java also along with that. No, 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 no. We don't have to. We don't have to. Yeah. We don't. We do not have to. I mean, you just have to, uh, you know, come this class. I am going to tell you about the basics. Even I'm going to give you practice, a little bit practice. If you do that, you're good to go with the Groovy. There's no problem okay. with that, right? So we do not need Java at all. Everything uh, that we need to do the automation, I'm going to cover that within the sessions only, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's begin today's session, right? Let's see how much we can cover. All right. So. <clears throat> It's uh, this session is going to be a bit theoretical. Uh, this is the first one, so uh, I'm going to term. Uh, I will try to cover the basic terminologies that uh, are going to be repeatedly used, right? Okay. So basically, the first thing is that what is a web service, right? So we'll try to understand this web service via an illustration, right? We'll try to make it as easy as it is possible for you. So, just hold on. Okay. Suppose on the internet, you know, there are, there are multiple websites, right? Hmm. There is a... Okay, let me change the color. There is a website called on the internet, makemytrip.com. Right? So, on hmm. this makemytrip.com, multiple users come right yes suppose these are the, the different users right each hmm. of these users are going to come on this make my trip with with a different requirement right someone wants yeah. to book a hotel someone wants to book a flight from flight. A, a certain location to certain location and other one also wants to book a flight but location uh, can be different right yes so, the different users come on this website so thing here to understand is how this make my trip cope with that with the different requests that it get how it works with that right suppose this is a user one right mm. okay let's just talk about the one user only right here okay suppose a user opens this make my trip dot com right on this make my trip dot com when it opens the website what it sees there is a GUI, right? There is a graphical user interface on which it sees uh, on the front page if it's book booking a flight that it, it has to uh, fill in that it's his destination location, his, his origin location, right? So suppose that hmm. person wants to go from Delhi to Goa. Yeah. Right. So it will fill that within the GUI and 
more details like on which dates it it wants to go right hmm. on which dates uh, he wants to go how many persons wants to go suppose four persons uh, wants to go that means it needs four seats so this information will be passed to this make my trip right within the gui okay. now what this make my trip will do with that information right how it handles this different kind of data from the different users what it does according to the information entered by the user it sends that information to different vendors website right hmm and who are these vendors different airlines right like i want yes. the, i want the ticket from a certain location to certain location on this on this date for this uh, many people right so make my trip yeah. sends uh, this requirement to different flights right uh, different vendors different airlines uh, website this is a website these are different websites so according to uh, the users requirement if any website has a availability for these people on this date from this location to this location will send a response suppose vendor 2 has the availability or the vendor 4 has the availability so they will send back the response right okay. and hmm. i'll get my result this is this uh, this is a very practical example right this is the easiest way to understand this like we open so many websites we see that that it retrieves information from different websites right? yes there are so many examples for this right yeah but uh, this is understandable right so what hmm. happens is this whole scenario user sees a G, uh, gui on which it fills information website gets that information and provides the corresponding result using the backend api so user sees the gpi uh, gui on the backend there is an api for the website that helps it to communicate with the different websites and generate a appropriate response according to the request right so this hmm. whole scenario is known as the web services communication between two websites using the underlying api is possible due to this web services and what we are going to do within this sessions we are going to test these web services right according to our, uh, if a if uh, if a request is getting sent by a, a website to a vendor right hmm. and if the right response is coming out of that uh, vendor's website is not this is what we are testing right we can do that uh, we can do this manually right but uh, we are going to see the automation uh, aspect of this right how i can automate this process mm -hmm. we are going to start with the manual testing obviously and uh, uh, after that we are going to see the automation of this right so basic structure is understandable right Yes. Okay. Now coming back to the our slides. Now this time it will be you know easier to understand. So like the, uh, like I told you about the uh, make my trip dot com, like there is a website called Amazon dot com. Again, different users come on this website with different needs, right? Everyone yes. has a different need. So this is the same uh, uh, scenario again. Now if I we go further, yeah, this is really important. so like i told you about two different websites same goes for two different applications suppose there are two web applications right one is being written in java one is in the php right yes. so this is the another another aspect this is not going to happen that uh, like i told you about that scenario that make my trip and the, those different website all written in the same language they they can be in different language like make my trip could be in php and the uh, airline website could be in dot net right so uh, this is a, uh, this is a really interesting thing to know that the, on this uh, web server it doesn't dis, uh, depend right one mm. application can be in different language other can be in different language they still they they can communicate a request can be sent a response can be generated right so and now the question uh, arises here is that how it is possible that when those website are written in different language how they are able to communicate right again mm -hmm. using this web services using the web services we regulated this request and response right this request and response is in the same language right yeah so basically either if this request is generated within the xml form 
a response will be generated in the XML form only. If it's in the JSON, it uh, same uh, again the request and response goes within the JSON only. So what we understand from this, this request and response can be s go back and through in two forms. Either it can be SOAP protocol or it can be through REST architecture, right? Mm. If the request and response are underlying a SOAP protocol, that means these are written within the XML. SOAP protocol only uses the XML. If this request and response are in the form of JSON, that means it comes under the REST. REST. Yeah. So XML, so XML goes for SOAP and JSON goes for REST. And oh, yeah. there, there is a uh, little exception that you are going to see at some point that you see some REST services with the XML. Yeah. Right? With the XML type of request and response. But that's very weird. Most of the time it's JSON. Right? And uh, after uh, the completion of this slide, you will be clear that how JSON is, you know, much more easier uh, to understand and to work with. Okay. So... <clears throat> I'll come back to this points again, you know, uh, within depth. So first, let's see what we have. So again, you know, like I told you, the, the, these uh, different example of this web services API behind the GUI, right? Mm -hmm. Every GUI has a API that do the processing of the data that has been putting uh, that that isn't put on that GUI. So like I gave you the example of Make My Trip, Facebook, and Gmail. Uh, you know that there's a Facebook and Gmail also has their own APIs, right? Using, oh, yeah. using those APIs, websites communicate with that. Like, uh, like if you open a new website, like if you open Book My Show or any, if you open Make My Trip, you see that on the sign up page, uh, there is an option that you can log in with your Facebook ID. You can log yes. in with your Gmail ID. There is an option, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So that's the API provided by the Facebook and the Gmail to the Make My Trip, right? Yeah. So that's how you, you see that web services everywhere. It's it's really trending everywhere. Every website is communicating with the other website, right? Yeah. Okay. Rest, it's understandable, right? Every example. Mm. All right. So next thing is again the example of the make my trip with, with which i started right make my yeah. trip communicate with the okay again uh, i'll do a addition to this diagram right now we understand the xml and the json so like i told you that a response has been generated in the form of xml suppose this is the rest yeah. protocol so a alternative to this request a response will be generated and this will be in xml only yes Right. Hmm. Okay. Again, so like I told you about the API and the GUI on this website, what we see is the GUI, right? The information that yes. we are putting in, that we are doing that in the GPA. And what that website is doing with that information is the work of the API. API. So basically, after every GUI, there is an API. After every uh, behind every GUI, there is a API. API. Right. All right, so really important. These are the jargons. These are the terms that are going to be repeatedly used within our sessions. So um, I know this lecture is uh, maybe a little bit, uh, you know, theoretical, so it can be boring, but uh, just cope with it because these are the things that we are going to need. Yeah. Okay. So like I told you about the XML and the JSON not going in, in in the depth of these i'm going to see uh, show you an example for these right uh, but in tomorrow's class like i told you if it's a soap protocol if our project is under soap that means request and response will be in the form of xmls only yeah. only the xmls when it's rest it can be xml it can be json and most of yes, the times it will be json yeah. right and about this wsdl WADS and ULs again really important so you know if your client provides you a WSDL right if your client provides you a WSDL file for testing yes. right that means your project is in SOAP okay right 
and if you are provided with the different urls or you are provided with the a wadl most of the cases in most of the times it will be urls you are will be provided with the different urls then that means that this is the rest most of the project is in the rest most. right so wsdl goes for soap and wadl and urls goes for the rest right yes again i'm going to show you an uh, after this slide i'm going to show you an example for each of these i'm going to show you an example for how an xml looks like how a json uh, request and response looks like right wsd and wdl okay so again uh, this is again a really important point so like now we know the basic structure right how this website communicates right how request and response being generated now the thing here to understand is that how actually you know without any problem this communication takes place so this communication take place securely due to uh, you know these mechanism always this web services follows a systematic flow and the secure flow first talking about the systematic flow systematic flow basically uh, the term means that the websites can be in different language right they will be in different language but that request and response should have a symmetry they should be in a systematic flow that means if an xml based request has been generated an xml based response will be should uh, yeah should yeah. and same goes for the json if it is, is xml based right so uh, you have any uh, idea about the xml's yes yeah, uh, has, yeah it is tags uh, i have yeah yeah so basically it uh, follows the tags within the xml we have tags but within the json we don't have tags right yeah w within the json we use the key and value pairs okay like uh, i'll show you an example also like uh, you know that within the xmls every start every tag that starts will end right? yeah will end yes so we usually pass the information within this tags only right but this is this is not the thing with the json within json we don't use tags instead oh, yeah. we use the key value pairs so suppose i have a key called name its value will be like this right yeah so this name is the key and ahmed is the value Yeah. Right. Whereas we store information uh, w within the XML within the tags, so you know it's a little bit complicated and it's not uh, really uh, most of the times not really understand for a new developer, right? That what kind of tags are being used. But within the JSON, it's easier to understand. You'll you'll see uh, from the example itself. Next thing is the secure flow. So basically, uh, like I told you about. this response and request going back and through so suppose if i talk about the same scenario for a banking website if two banking websites are communicating with each other right so create some critical data is being going back and through right yes users information like the account password and uh, account number and all so we need some kind of security Oh. Yes. We need a security layer. We need an encryption uh, with this request and response, right? So this is uh, that's why we have to maintain a sec secure flow within this web services. So to maintain this uh, secure flow, we have uh, there are two ways, right? Now the main yes. comes. There are two ways to do that. Either we can use the SOAP protocol, right? or but i can use the rest architecture hmm. right so we can do this encryption either in the form of soap or the form of rest yes right and it's understandable why we need this secure uh, why we need this encryption we need this encryption because some critical data is uh, being uh, you know getting sent and received hmm. right so these are the basic terminologies right that we follow within the web services right i know it's little bit uh, you know sketchy but i think it's relatable right yes yeah okay. 
Next is about this WSDL, WADL, and the URLs. So uh, right now I'm not going to talk about this. In tomorrow's session, I'm going to show you this. That how yeah. WSDL look like, how WADL look like, and how a URL look like. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. So next is about the XML. Okay. All right. So coming to this XML, right? So how, like I told you about this XML, how this XML looks like the information is stored within the tags. Every tag that every tag that starts will end with the same name with the slash, right? And I'm sorry. Yeah. And if I talk about, you know, if I show you this just a, if I actually show you that how this request and response looks like within the form of this tags, it looks like this, right? Again, I'll open that example. It will be, you know, much more better way to understand this. So like I told you about this example, this make my trick example, this is how the request XML for this looks like the information that has been passed within the GUI, you know, send get sent to different vendors in this form. If we talk about so protocol, right? Yes, like user pass the information that from where he wants to go, like he wants to travel from Delhi. So the information got stored within the start journey tag, right? Where it wants to go, it, it, the information is getting stored within the end journey tag from which date it wants to go and how many passengers want to go. So this is how this request XML looks like that is going to this all, all of these vendors, right? And the vendor that has uh, the, uh, you know, the, the required information will send a response and how that response is going to look like like this. I'll open the request also side by side. Okay, right. So this was our request and according to that request, I'm getting this response, right? You see yeah. within the response, we have a new tag coming up, mm. right? The price tag. So this is what we are going to test that if a particular request is getting generated from a one website, according to our need, according to our want, uh, if we are getting the appropriate response from the server side or from the different website or not. Yes. Right. Like there are so many things that, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we can put the regular expression, we can put the restrictions on, right? That the price that are coming from the website should not be less than this. If the number of passengers are this, then the sprite should be uh, multiple of five. Mm. Right. So this all of the things that we, we are going to see within the SOAP UI tools all only, right? Again, you know, the same thing that like I told you, but this time I just show you the how the, those XMLs looks like. Now, like the XML, <coughs> same way the, uh, this JSON request and response looks like. This time we do not use, we don't use the stacks. Instead of these, I'll use a key and value pair. Like I told you that th there will be a key that name will be like start journey and it has a value called Delhi. Yeah. So like uh, right here, uh, we have a tag called name within that name tag. I store this Priya name and within the case of Jason, I have the key value pair. This time yeah. name is the key and this Priya is the value. value. Right. We do not have any tags. We we are not using any slash or any other symbols. We are simply storing our information in this form. Right. Yeah. So that's why, you know, uh, JSON is easier to understand. And code code is much shorter than this uh, XML. Right. Okay. If I exactly show you that, you know, uh, this is even better, you know, to understand. But before this, if you actually look like a SOAP protocol based uh, XML, it has so many tags. It starts with the SOAP, div tree. After that, it has multiple tags that you have to remember. But within the case of JSON, you don't have to do that. You can simply start with the information that you want to pass. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. So like this is the what I was to, uh, talking about. The uh, this is how uh, that soap structure looks like. So basically, a soap based request XML starts with the soap envelope tag. Within that, we have a soap header tag, and then the soap body tag. Right. And so these are the these are the common tags that will be present in every soap based XML. Uh, in the rest of the soap structure, like I told you that there is only XML for the soap. There is no JSON, right? And uh, like other uh, you know, uh, request and response, soap request comes with the soap request comes with the response. So if a soap request is generated, again a soap response will be come uh, will come up. There will be a start tag and end tag. Every tag every tag that is starting will will end. Right again, the repetitive things uh, that we have discussed. Right now, this is this is basically the illustration of uh, that's written here. That everything within the uh, within a SOAP based request resides within a SOAP envelope tag. Within SOAP envelope tag, we have the SOAP header tag and and the SOAP body tag. So basically, this information, right? This information comes here within this body. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, Arish, what is the difference between HTML and XML? What is the difference between the HTML and the XML? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, HTML is much more basic uh, language, whereas XML we have much more liberties. Like uh, HTML is basically used to design a normal web page or a simple website, but on the back end uh, we use the XML. Like right here using the xml i'm not uh, you know writing a web page we are using for a back end purpose right how to website yeah. is being communicated so uh, using the xml it has much more uh, liberties for a de developer right on the yeah, the, the tags are same even we have the header tags on html yeah 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 we have the header tag we have the body tag also within the html yeah yeah okay so uh, like I told you about the soap structure, there's a rest structure. So, like I told you that rest can be in form of XMLs, right? You hardly see an example of a rest-based XML. Most of the time it's JSON and now you know the reason why it's JSON. Mm. Right? It's much easier to understand and uh, to implement than the XMLs. Right? But re rest can be in form of, form of XMLs. We should know about it. And... <coughs> I'm sorry. And when we want to implement the rest, we use the WADL or the URLs. Most of yeah. the cases, URLs, like I told you, but a WADL is possible. You remember what uh, what we get for a REST-based uh, project? We get the WSDLs. WSDLs. Yeah, the WNDLs and the URLs for the REST. REST. Yeah. Okay, so... <coughs> All right. So next is the okay. Next we are talking about the SOAP UI tool, right? SOAP UI is the tool. Within this tool, we test web services. Those projects can be in form of REST. Those projects can be in form of SOAP, oh. right? Name of the tool is SOAP UI. Don't confuse with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So basically, uh, like I told you, SOAP UI is used to automate the web services right we can yeah. we can do the manual testing within the SOAP UI also but the main reason the SOAP UI was introduced to do that process via the automation automation yeah so SOAP UI is open source free and the cross platform testing tool so basically yeah uh, it's an open source you can create your own jars according to your needs that that you want to uh, uh, you know use within your project so you can do that and implement that within the SOAP UI so it's, yeah, it's it's an open source there is a free version and there is a paid version like i told you we are going to cover the free version first then the pro version and reason being why there is a free and pro version you're going to see within the session only that how much easier it is to work with the pro version like everything is possible in the free version like found the alternatives like uh, using the eclipse we can overcome the limitations of the uh, free version of the soap ui right 
Okay. We have to buy the pro. Is it the one-time payment for the software, or we have to pay for the every year? No, no, no. It's it's a subscription base. So you have after some time you have to pay it again for it. Okay. You know the thing is there are so many clients, so many people are working on the free version only. Everything that is uh, you know available within the pro version, we can do that within the free version, but. It's it's a little complicated process. It's a little bit you know you just you just have to get used uh, used to with it. Yeah. Like, there's so many people that are working on the free version. Even we are working on the free version, right? So okay. you uh, if you aware about Eclipse, you if you use the Eclipse. Yeah. No. 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 I just have no idea. Okay. Okay, so no way we're going to see that within the session only. And then last point is that it's a cross-platform testing tool. So why it is called as a cross-platform? So basically, you know, uh, it's available on different operating systems. You can use it on a Mac. You can use it on Windows, even on the Linux. So it's a cross-platform. All right. So it's again about history of the SOAP UI that it is developed by the Smartware. It's a company uh, that founded the SOAP UI. Okay, and again, uh, important point that like the SOAP UI tool is you know entirely based on the Java platform. So it's written and de developed. Everything is been done within the Java only. Right, you should know about it. So, and uh, like I told you about the how we are going to learn about this automation part using this Groovy. So basically, you know. Uh, if we open the SOAP UI docs, I, I am going to give you the links for that. From there, you can get so much help with this Groovy. It's basically a scripting okay. language like I told you and it will be used for the automation of this web services. Alright. So next is about that what kind of testing that we can use, uh, can do within this SOAP UI. So basically, like I told you, within the SOAP UI, we can use, uh, do the testing of this web services we can do the testing of the underlying api behind this web services right i gave you the example for the api of this make my trip right so those kind of yeah. testing we do so we do the rest based uh, testing we we do the json based testing and also the functional testing uh, why the functional uh, testing is being uh, used here so basically everything uh, like the example of this make my trip Okay, we don't have th that illustration still. So like I gave you this example. So basically th these are the function of this website. If a user comes and passes some, some certain information, it should get a response according to that request, right? So these are the functionality of this website that we can test using this SOAP UI. Okay, last point is about the versions of the SOAP UI. So basically we have two versions of SOAP UI, like I told you the free version and the pro version. Pro version is called as the ready API. It comes with the 14 days trials. So uh, do not install the free version right now. Okay, in tomorrow's class, I am going to tell you about uh, that. What what you want to, uh, what you are going to install, right? Uh, but but about this ready API, do not install the pro version. We are just uh, first we are going to download and uh, install the free version of the SOAP UI. Reason being, it's a, it's just a 14 day trial, so we'll install it before we'll start work. Uh, we'll start working on it, right? Uh, as it what. Uh... May I know your name, good name? Uh, Abhinav, yeah. Yeah, Abhinav. Yeah. I already uh, downloaded the pro version and uh, installed in the night. Uh, uh, but yesterday night I have install uninstalled it from my machine. Okay. So can I use uh, one more time for? Okay. Uh, well, basically we can't. You know, it has. Uh, but we'll find an alternative for that. Do do not worry. So right yeah. now, I'm just telling you. You know, quickly I'm telling you uh, the things that we are going to need. Right. So. Yeah. First, we need the SOPI free version. Okay. So, you know the website, right? From the smart smart beer itself, you can download this, or just yeah. Google it out. All right, so if you go to this download section, you're going to see this two versions, right? There is this pro version, there's a free version that we are going to need. You see, there are 
you see all the tick marks on this pro version and on the free version that like you can't generate uh, can't export reports you can't use this j unit so these are the limitation of this free version and like i told you using the eclipse we can overcome all this we can have okay. all of these functionalities within this free version only process okay. yeah there, there is a process that we are going to follow we are going to use a different tool to achieve that like i told you the eclipse right all right so this is the version that we need uh, this is the one we are going to use it right so just download this and after this what we need is we need the jdk what is jdk jdk is basically the java development kit java development kit yeah so just google it out the jdk and you are going to find the download link so if i download over it and uh, what i suggest you is that right here we are getting the jdk 9 version 9 i i want to advise you to use this version use the uh, not ab above the 8 reason being uh, like i told you the application that we are going to use the retail app and all that has been all tested on the java 8 it's working fine we didn't do the testing with the 9 yet so Uh, it will be easier for us to understand that way you know if you face any uh, issue with that so to debug that and to understand uh, will be little bit hard right mm. okay so what you can do is uh, the there there is a version available on this website or alternatively what we can do i will share these files that you have to install on a drive and you can download from there and install the right version right yeah will you send me the link no what i'll do is i'll i'll give you a drive link everything that we'll discuss you know the downloading part and the files and all i'll upload on that drive and you can download it okay right fine yeah so the, uh, the first thing was the soap ui second thing was the jdk and the third thing that we need is a server Uh, okay i'll tell you about it tomorrow you know before uh, downloading and configuring that i have to tell you that why we actually need it on the first yeah point. right all right so for this session i think we are done uh, so be, in today's session basically we covered the basics all the basics that we should know about the web services how a web services work how different websites communicate with each other right what is the so protocol what is the rest architecture what is an xml how a json looks like right so all the basic parts right so uh, hmm. uh from this whole lecture if you have any doubt anything you, did, you didn't understand you can ask me right yeah it's understandable right that how this yes. works is work wow. the api gui hmm right Okay, so uh, I think we should end the session. I'll share the drive link with you, so you can just in um, just install the Soap UI version. Uh, I'll show you tomorrow the installation of the JDK and the other thing that we do. We'll do that within yeah. the class only, right? Okay. Okay. So I'll see you tomorrow then. Right? Yeah. Thank and, you. And uh, you know, try uh, uh, try to come on the time because we have one hour, right? From the eight to nine. Yes. Right. So yeah. I'll see you tomorrow on the eight. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then bye bye. No bye. Uh, Lakshmi, can you hear my voice? Okay. Uh, you have any doubt from the session? I think uh, you joined a. Uh, I you joined a bit later uh, the session of the timing. So if you have any doubt from the session, because it it was just an introductory session. Uh, am I audible to you? All right, all right. Okay. 
no problem so we just basically covered the basics of the that uh, what is a web services and the terminology that we are going to use right i just gave an example within the session of this make my trip website how this make my trip you know uh, communicates with the different websites so i gave an example basically in that example uh, how a user when opens this make my trip dot com you know copes with the website so basically a user enters the information suppose he, he wants to book a flight from some central location to the certain location suppose user wants to go from De delhi to goa so it puts that information within this make my trip block and that make my trip uh, website within the form of request sent uh, that information to different vendors who are this dif different vendors these vendors are the different airline websites right so it sends that information and that airline website which has the uh, you know appropriate uh, response to that request will <coughs> send an information back right so basically this make my trip generates a request according to user's requirement and if any of the vendors to where this request is going has that information available will send back the response and this request and response are in the form of xml or in the form of json right if it's in the form of xml that means it it comes under the soap protocol if it's in the form of a rest uh, if it's in the form of json then it comes under the rest right so basically this whole scenario this re request and response going back and through is known as the web services how this is possible you due to the underlying api of these websites and what we do within uh, uh, using the soapi tool we test this api we test this web services that a right response is getting generate to the to the uh, corresponding request or not right so this is the same thing again this is just the theoretical part again we are going to see the practical implementation of this within the class only right okay so all right so i'll also share uh, uh, the drive link with you so just do do the little bit of downloading part of the tool rest we'll see uh, in the class tomorrow all right then i'll see you tomorrow Bye.